So, uh, well, we start, you know, developing with Frappe and React, right? We encountered a few problems, uh, you know, more logistical, technical problems, right? One of them was that it's very easy to change the database schema in Frappe. You just, you just go to the UI and, you know, rename a column on the fly, right? And that would actually break our code. Right, because some front-end API might be consuming that doc type, and uh, you know there was no way for TypeScript to actually know that a doc type change has occurred. So one of the things that we did was we developed another open-source uh, tool. Uh, let me just, yeah, it's called the Frappe TypeScript Type Generator. It's a, it's a simple Frappe app, right? What this would do is that every time you update or create a new doc type, it will create the TypeScript type definitions for you, right? So uh, how does that help us? Uh, I'll just give you an example, right? So for example, uh, we have MyAssetBuddy, which is our main Frappe app, right? So you've got different modules, you've got the hooks.py, everything. Uh, and we have got MAB, which is our React app. Right, so this is built using Vite and React, right, and it uses TypeScript underneath. Now, the thing is, whenever you know a new doc type is created in My Asset Buddy, right, your doc type JSON, etc., everything is created fine, but no one actually informs the front end code that the type for a particular doc type has changed, right? There's no way to know. So, what we used to do initially was that the person who's making the change on the back end is also writing the change on the interface on the front end and then seeing if the app compiles or not, right? Uh, if, if, for example, a, a column was deleted or renamed or something, then TypeScript would throw an error that, you know, this value doesn't exist. Uh, but obviously that was becoming too cumbersome. It's like repeat work for no apparent reason. So uh, what we did was we created this uh, tool. Right, uh, you can go on this frappe dash types, right? I'll just show how it works. So first thing, uh, you need to define your type generation setting. So uh, in this case, I want my types to be generated uh, for only for my asset buddy. So I don't want it to be generated for, generated for let's say the frappe app, right? Uh, and I want it to be generated, you know, at that path, uh, which is my front end react app. And then in the SRC folder, obviously, so uh, that's pretty much it. That's the configuration after you install the Frappe app. And what it would do is that, uh, let's say I've got this doc type called drawing file, right? It's in this module called asset register. Uh, let's say that file name, I'm, I'm just editing, right? So this is like uh, actual code base that our company uses, so I'll have to revert all those. But anyway, I'll just uh, make it uh, you know, non-mandatory. Right, and I'll save it. So it's saved, it works as expected, but in my VS code, you'll see there are two changes. Right? One is the drawing file.json, which Frappe maintains. So it says, okay, uh, required, you know, it's one now. Right? But it also created another file. So I'll just open this file directly without the diff. Yep. So it created another file. You can see the path, right? It's MAB, SRC, types, and then the module name, which is asset register. So it's smart enough to actually segregate all your type definitions by modules. And then in drawingfile.ts, you've got an interface. So these are all the standard fields that come with every Frappe doc type, right? And then for every other field, it will actually give you, you know, the types. And these are correct types, by the way. So for example, drawing file type was a select uh, type over here. Drawing file type was a select type. So it's actually smart enough to tell you that it's an optional type, so it could be null, right? And it will only be these options. Now imagine the developer productivity, right, on the front end side when I use this. So for example, I'll just show you a piece of code where we are using this type. So we are using a use Frappe get doc hook uh, from a previous talk, right? So we are fetching the document, right? And we have specified the type, which is drawing file. Now let's say if I go over here and if the data has been fetched, I say data dot. So you see, it actually gives me suggestions right here in the code base. 
and it will tell me what kind of field it is, right? So area is data. Uh, for example, uh, drawing file type is a select, right? If I say, uh, so it will give me options as well over here, like directly in the code, no configuration whatsoever. Now, here's the cool part though. Uh, what if, right, I add, you know, documentation over here. So let's say file name, right? And I, add, uh, I, I, in the description, I add the name of the, you know, the description of the field, right? So name of the file without extension. And if I save this, in my code suggestion, uh, if I go to file name, it will actually tell me in the comments that name of the file without extension. So uh, you can see right here. And this is actually critical for us because all of our code is now extremely type safe, right? And uh, that actually helps, uh, you know, developer productivity as well as uh, sanity. So yeah, uh, that's it. Thank you.